Hello friends, this is Hedda. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am setting up my bullet journal for the last month of the year and the last month that I'll be spending with this notebook. It's a bit bittersweet because I absolutely love this notebook, could not be happier. It's from Tukti and I'll put a link in the description box together with a discount code because I can really recommend this notebook. Before we get into my spreads for this month, I want to say a big thank you to Ohuhu for sponsoring this video. Ohuhu sent over their set of 72 watercolor brush pens for me to try and they are a lot of fun. There are so many different colors and I've already had a lot of fun trying them out. I don't think I've ever owned watercolor brush pens before so this is a brand new medium for me. The set comes with a watercolor paper pad with 12 sheets and I've already practiced a little bit as you can see. I will try to finish it sometime soon. The colors are really vibrant and at first glance I thought I was missing some lighter colors but the thing is that these are meant to be used in combination with water so you can make any shades of the colors really. Back in September Ohuhu also sent me their calligraphy pen set and I'm using the pens all the time. I mostly use the brush pens also called sign pens sometimes and my favorite sizes are the S and the XS but the set also comes with proper calligraphy pens which by the way, I'm still struggling with even after practicing to Skillshare classes about calligraphy, but I really like this set. I would definitely recommend it. Back to the watercolor brush pens. As is often the case with any brand of markers, the colors on the barrels or the caps don't always match the colors of the actual markers. So I really like that the watercolor brush pen set comes with little swatch cards where you can swatch all the brush pens on watercolor paper. That was really helpful for me when finding the perfect shape for my December setup and also for my practice piece in the watercolor paper pad. So thank you so much to Ohuhu for sending these over and for supporting my content. You can get 10% off your order from Ohuhu with my affiliate code Muchibujo. They have lots of other art supplies as well so check out my October plan with me to see some of the other products that I've tried from them. I often get questions about what I use in my journal so I wanted to show you all of the pens and markers that I use in this video. First off, I use these four watercolor brush pens in shades of red and pink. I also use the gray Ohuhu color marker, which is a dual tipped felt nib brush pens. You will have seen me use these markers in my October plan with me video and they really come in handy. Then for my line art, I am using the smallest brush pens from the calligraphy set in the sizes XS and S. I am using my gold Sakura Jelly Roll pen as well because it's the best metallic gold gel pen I've tried so far. And lastly, I forgot to show my Zebra Sarasa gel pen in vintage red, but I will put a link in the description box so you can check that out. And now let's get into my bullet journal spreads for December. I'm not doing a holiday theme because, to be honest, I don't really like Christmas themes that much, but there's still something about the color red that screams my name at the end of the year, and that's probably because I associate Christmas with red, and I associate December with Christmas. So although this isn't a holiday theme, it still has a similar color scheme. I'm not sure what I want to call my theme this month, but it has a lot of hands and red strings. There is this old belief in East Asia about the red string of fate, which says that there is an invisible red string binding two people together, usually two people who are destined to fall in love, kind of like soulmates, I guess. I think it's a cool idea and I've seen the red string show up in lots of anime in particular, so I wanted to give it a go and see if I could make a bullet journal theme out of the red string of fate. What you see me draw here is my cover page, which is something I like to do each month to kind of separate the months from each other. And the idea here is that there will be two hands connected by a red string and I wanted it to be kind of chaotic and not just be one string but have lots of strings hanging down from the hands and kind of hanging off the side of the page. And I started by drawing the line art first and I started with just the strings and then I drew the hands after I felt that I had enough string. I wanted it to look a little bit chaotic and because this cover page is very simple, I wanted there to be lots of strings so that 
it would look a little bit more detailed than if there was just one string connecting the hands. Speaking of hands, hands are very difficult to draw. I have looked up so many photo references for hands and if you saw my search history you might think I had some weird hand fetish or something because there are so many pictures. But I chose some hand references to use for this cover page and I tried to draw them as best as I could and I think that the end result turned out quite nice. But hands are definitely a challenge. The same with feet. Hands and feet are just really difficult to draw in my opinion. If you also think hands are difficult to draw and would rather like to use my hands in your journal, I have a full journaling kit over on Patreon, including printable stickers and even a digital version of this cover page, which you can print out at home and glue into your notebook. I make monthly journaling kits over on Patreon, and if you want physical stickers sent to you in the mail every month, I have that too. So go check out my Patreon on patreon.com slash mochibujo if you want to check out my little community over there. We also have a Discord server which is open to patrons only and there's a lot of fun enabling happening over there. <laughs> For this entire cover page I actually only used one brush pen to draw and write everything. I really like how organic my drawings look when I use a brush pen instead of a regular fine liner for my line art because it makes the lines flow a little bit differently and they look a little bit more alive because of the varying thickness. So that's definitely something I would recommend trying out if you haven't already. Drawing with fine liners is also great of course, but it just gives it a little bit of a different look if you use a thin brush pen. And I would recommend a thinner, harder nib, so maybe like the Tombo Fudunosuke hard tip or the extra small Ohuhu calligraphy pen. I used one of the watercolor brush pens to color the red string. Uh, the color is called Scarlet and it's a really rich, pretty red color. I definitely wanted to make sure that it wasn't too pink because I wanted it to be bright red and very visible. Another trick I guess that I used to make sure that the red string was kind of the main focus even though they're just very thin lines going across the page is that I didn't use any other bright colors for the spread or this whole setup really so all of the hands are just going to remain white although I use a little bit of gray to make some shade on the hands just to make them look a little bit more real I suppose and then I did make these rectangles kind of in the background but they're in softer pink shades so that way I made sure that the red string would still be in focus. I think that if I were to do this again instead of rectangles I might have picked a circle at the center of the page. I think that would have looked pretty cool but I did rectangles so that's the way it is right now. <laughs> I realize now that my color scheme for this setup is almost exactly the same as my December theme last year. I mean the themes are completely different but the colors are very similar. I also did like a pink city slash Christmas theme last year and I think it's because of the red and the the pinks just go well with it. I think pink and red is really cute together and this way I am avoiding the green because that's like peak Christmas theme to me, the red and the green. I don't really like it. I don't really want it in my journal, so that's why I end up with pink. Although these are watercolor brush pens, I didn't actually use any water with them. I was a little bit worried about not having full control of where the color goes, especially because of the red string. I didn't want any red bleeding anywhere, so that's why I just use them like regular markers. And that's also kind of what I think is so great about these markers, is that you don't have to use them as watercolors, you can also use them just as regular brush pens for coloring. So you have kind of a wider range of uses for them than if you were to get like a paint palette or something like that. This cover page definitely has a lot of empty white spaces. That's something that can usually be a little bit intimidating, I think. So to add a little bit more details and some more things to catch your eye, I added some gold specks kind of with my jelly roll pen. I basically just made some dots, not even sparkles, just a few dots here and there to bring a little bit of sparkle to the page. 
Gold is also a color that I associate with Christmas, so I guess that worked out well. The final details was really making the string kind of look like rope or like or look like string I suppose. So I used my Zebra Sarasa gel pen in the vintage red color and I just made diagonal lines across the string all the way along the whole thing. And it took a while but I think it was worth it in the end because it does give the string a little bit more dimension and a little bit more detail so I really like how it turned out. And that's pretty much it for the covered page. I think it looks quite nice. It's very simple, but it still has a lot of details from the string. So it looks quite magical in my opinion. And the next spread that I am making is my main calendar and tasks list spread for December. I like to have a calendar every month where I can write down appointments or birthdays, deadlines, etc. So it's very important for me to have this spread as a part of my monthly spreads each month. I am making a similar calendar to what I did in November, although in November my cover page and my calendar were kind of on the same spread and this time they are not, but that's kind of the only difference. So I am making five long rectangles instead of making a grid i am making these five long rectangles and then i'm splitting each of them into seven sections for decorations i am kind of just making more string and there will be some hands on this page as well although smaller than on the cover page my lines were getting a little bit shaky at this point because I had had a lot of coffee. <laughs> I was filming this at a coffee shop as usual and because I was here for quite some time I had to order several cups of coffee so that they would let me stay. A lot of coffee shops here in Tokyo have time limits which can be quite strict sometimes like you can only stay for an hour or one and a half hours or two hours depending on how much you order so I tried to make sure that I ordered enough to justify sitting there for so long and as a result I got a little bit jittery but it's okay. My lines are never completely straight anyway although I keep getting comments saying that my lines are super straight but I think they just look straighter on camera and looks like they're super straight because the video is sped up but um, yeah my lines are are not completely straight and I also draw this very slowly. I do use the dot grid in my journal to help me make my lines as straight as possible though kind of playing connect the dots with my with my pens and it works out quite well. I used my Sarasa gel pen, the vintage red one, to put in the dates for November and January that would be in this calendar since I just included all five weeks that are in December. In this way it kind of sets the November days and the one January day apart from the rest of the December days. I used more of the pink markers to make little squares on top of the calendar and wrote the days of the week. My calendars usually start on a Monday because that's what I grew up with and what feels right for me. For me the week definitely starts on a Monday, not on a Sunday. <laughs> The more I look at the hanging strings here that I drew on top of the page, the more they kind of look a little bit like garlands or string lights or something like that, which definitely goes with the Christmas feel. So maybe I unintentionally created a holiday theme. Just like on the cover page, I started drawing the hands by actually just drawing the string. I wanted to make sure that I didn't suddenly want to add more string after having drawn the hands because that would be very difficult. So instead I drew all of the string and then I drew the hands afterwards. And I also made sure that I drew everything that would kind of go on top of any of the boxes or on top of the calendar so I wouldn't have any accidents and have to use my white gel pen to kind of erase some of the line art. I actually sketched these hands so many times. I kept drawing them too big for some reason. I wanted them to be small, but it was really difficult and I, I quite struggled with my sketches this month. But 
if you have a good sketch, it's so much easier when you finally put your pen to the paper and everything becomes less stressful, at least for me, if I have a good sketch and I know what I'm doing. So it worked out even though I spent a lot of time on the sketches. So this spread has my calendar on the left side obviously and then on the right side there will be room for lots of tasks. I like to have a main to-do list for the month just so that I have all of my tasks collected in one spread and I can easily see exactly what it is that I need to do. So I split this page into two sections, mainly so that I would have room for more tasks than if I had just done one section. And I did the header the same way I did for the days of the week. I made little squares with the pink markers. And then I did something that I kind of regret doing after, but I basically used the watercolor brush pens as highlighters to clearly separate each line from each other and this usually works really well for me but I think with these watercolor markers it was really hard to get like one clear thick line and I kind of had to go over each line several times to get good coverage and that it, so that it wouldn't look streaky so I probably wouldn't do that again if I had the chance to do it over but in the end it doesn't look bad and I do find that it's a lot easier to see each task separately when the lines are kind of separated like this. So I guess it would be the same to make little lines below each line for example, but I really like the color and I feel like it adds a little bit more to the spread since a lot of the spread is just white empty space. You know, as I am watching my video and recording my voiceover, this might actually be my most minimalist setup of the year. There just aren't that much colors and not that many things going on. It's pretty simple. Most of it is just red string and I kind of like it. I'm not saying that I'm gonna bring minimalism to my bullet journal in 2023 because I don't think that will ever happen. I do like making my spreads kind of over the top and with lots of details and lots of colors and all of that, but it is fun to change things up a little bit and I definitely see that this particular theme is very different from what I have done for the rest of the year and that's also exciting to do different things and not just get stuck doing the same thing every month because that's kind of how you get tired of things and end up not wanting to do them, you know? So I think it's important to vary our themes every month or at least for me. I can't speak for anyone else but for me that is really important to me to vary my themes every month, to use different colors and to just have fun with it. So the final spread I'm making in this video, it's not a weekly spread. I know that you guys really enjoyed my video about how I journal where I also made a few weekly spreads and talked you through how I use my journal throughout the month and I'll probably make similar looking weekly spreads for December. I haven't quite decided yet because I haven't actually made any weekly spreads yet but you'll definitely see pictures of my weekly spreads over on Instagram so if you're not following me there yet definitely check that out if you're on Instagram. So this spread is going to have a content planner on the left side and a spread for Christmas gifts on the right side. I know that in my previous video I was kind of complaining about my content planner spread not really working properly and I was actually considering not making one at all for the month of December. I wasn't sure if I would actually need it or if it would be helpful. In the end I decided to make one but make it a little bit different than last month's. What I realized is that usually during the month I'm not necessarily planning or coming up with ideas for videos I want to make that exact month. I'm thinking ahead to the next month. So I made a specific section on the spread that is dedicated to ideas for January and things I can prepare for videos in January. And I think that that will be quite helpful. I also have a little to-do list for things I need to do for videos I'm posting in December. I have a lot of big videos coming out in December and they do take a lot more time both to film and to edit and record voiceovers for and all of that. So there is a lot to do in December when it comes to YouTube 
It's kind of only natural though, we're kind of wrapping up the year and preparing for the new one and if you use a planner or a bullet journal for planning then, you know, it, it is the best time of the year for planning, in my opinion. So here you see me making my little to-do list for January or like idea section for January and I made a little extra header for it that will just say January and then I actually ended up coloring in this rectangle with a very pale pink just so that it would look a little bit different from the rest of the spread I guess just varying things a little bit and since it didn't really work that well using the markers as highlighters to get like a crisp straight line like I'm trying again on the, on the spread because I guess one mistake wasn't enough. But yeah, since most of the background in these spreads is white and there's a lot of white space, I tried to make the insides of each section a little bit more colorful just so that it wouldn't kind of blend together and just all seem like the same section, if that makes sense. I'm not sure this is making sense but you can see what I'm doing and it, it makes sense when you look at it I suppose. I don't think I'll use the little calendar the same way that I used it in November but I haven't quite decided how to use it yet so maybe I will post about it on Instagram and talk about it a little bit more once I have kind of come up with a proper plan for it. There's only one hand on the spread but in return there's a lot of string, <laughs> not so much on this page but a lot more on the other page and the page to the right will be a little list for Christmas presents. I don't actually give that many Christmas presents, it's usually just my closest family and then maybe some of my friends if I find something that makes me think of them or something that fits them perfectly. I don't want to give gifts just to give gifts. I think it's important to be intentional with Christmas presents maybe especially because there are so many ads right now for tons of different things that you can buy towards the end of the year to make you shop a lot and buy tons of gifts for people but if the recipient won't use the gift that you give them then what's the point really that's kind of how I'm thinking about it so I only give gifts if I if I know that it's a good gift if that makes sense so yeah this spread or I guess half of it is a little list for Christmas presents or ideas for Christmas presents. I don't need the whole page because like I said I don't really give that many gifts. So at the bottom I did a little quote that I found online. I don't know who wrote it or who said it but I thought it was quite nice and it kind of fit my theme a little bit. I was considering to do a quote about red string instead or something that would kind of fit the theme a little bit more but I ended up with a quote about December. It is both the busiest month but also the calmest I think. It's super busy at the beginning of the month and then once you get to Christmas everything kind of slows down. At least it does for me. Christmas in Norway is very calm and quiet and I really like that. I'm not quite ready for Christmas and winter to begin to be honest. Here in Tokyo it's still very much fall. We had 20 degrees the other day and it's just been really nice and sunny and quite warm and the trees are beautiful. So I'm definitely not in a December Christmas mood yet but it will probably come eventually. For now I am just enjoying a little bit milder weather because I know that winter will be really cold and it will most likely be quite long so yeah just stocking up on some sunshine while I can. And that's it for all of my spreads for December. Following these spreads I will be making my weekly spreads of course and that will kind of be the end of this notebook and come January I will start using a new notebook, a new bullet journal. I will be making a video where I set up that journal and kind of get it ready for the new year. So if you're not subscribed to my channel already, definitely do that and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really appreciate it. I know it's a little bit late, but it was the best I could do this month. If you watched the video all the way to the end, put a red emoji in your comment. Just be creative, any red emoji will do, but the best one 
will get a virtual cookie. Oh, I should also mention I have reopened my sticker shop, ikigaipapir.com. So if you've been wanting to buy anything from there, I have been closed for over a month, but I'm finally open again and ready to send you some stickers for Christmas. And thank you so much to Ohuhu for sponsoring this video. Remember, you can get 10% off your purchase from Ohuhu with my discount code MOCHIBUJO. They are also on Amazon, but you can't use my discount code there. So if you want the discount, you should shop directly from Ohuhu. And that's all for today. I hope that you're all having a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye!